All right, I think I'm recording now. Well, good morning. I'm Alan Meadum. I'm the technology director for the North Shore School District. Um, doing my little intro thing for you. And the session is terms and conditions doing more than just clicking agree, um, which I'm going to pre-warn you. I, um, I never actually finished the presentation, and I'll explain why when I was... Uh, as we get into the session, uh, because I had a bit of a like a realization come to Jesus moment with myself while playing golf on Tuesday, where I, I changed this, I changed my I, philosophy around the session, so I didn't finish the session, and I'll explain it as we go on. Okay, so the topic is really. What do we do about all those click wrap agreements that either we bring into the district ourselves or more likely that teachers are bringing into the district and uh, you know just click agree and move through and move through? And we all know there are some data problems and some legal problems associated with with folks doing that. So how do you how do you manage that? So. As I was thinking about the session, I thought, okay, what, what really describes our situation that we've got here right now? Well, we've got more and more online services and applications that are available to teachers in the classroom. There's more all the time. Um, teachers want those systems for a variety of reasons, to differentiate instruction for kids, to gather, manage, use more data in the classroom, increase communication out to the kids or out to the parents or you know, whomever about what's going on for increased productivity for the teacher and for the kids so they can get more things done. So that's some motivation. More access to devices just if for everybody in the classroom just means I'm going to have more applications for kids to use. Our networks are more robust so people can use these things in a productive way in the classroom. The applications are browser-based so there's no software to install generally with these systems. If you want to get, on, get onto it, you can get onto it real easy. It's easier for teachers and it's low or free cost. And of course, free in this case means like a puppy sometimes, but you know, it's, nobody has to lay out any dollars. So when you think about what are the challenges here, I looked on the list and I say, well, these are all good things, right? I mean, there's, what's the problem? These are all, these are all good problems to have. But there's other challenges with this also. You don't get a chance to assess the quality of the tool that they've got, either from a technical standpoint, which, you know, maybe we're qualified to help them with, but from an instructional standpoint, which we're probably not qualified to help them with. Some in, some in the room are, and some of us aren't, but, you know, nobody, the accessibility means teacher can bring in basically what they want, and maybe it's not even any good. Even if it's good, does it support your district's curriculum? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, you don't know. Does it bypass district standards that you've set up regarding communications, regarding how you're going to collect data, how you're going to use data? Uh, are they getting all this good information in, but they're getting it in a format and nobody's going to be able to do anything with it? That's a potential problem. You got problems with vendors' capacity to keep current with what's, with what's going on, both instructionally or just keeping their software up to date. Well, that's a problem for you. And you don't know, does it support best practices or is it even legal? Which is probably the motivation for a lot of us to be in here right now is, you know, I don't think the vendors are evil, but I also don't think they spend a whole bunch of time worrying about, am I following FERPA, COPA, PPRN, and all these other, these other uh, rules that we've got out there. But the real big problems for me with the situation we find ourselves are the last two. Who's got time to review these terms and conditions and go through them? And even if you had the time, do you have the ability? I don't know if there's anybody in the room who's a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, you know, but I read a lot of these agreements. And every time I read them, at some point, I think, you know, I think I know what I'm reading, but I probably am missing something here. And if the vendor's really pushing back on me, I don't really have the qualifications to battle them about this. So these are all problems we've got. So... What do you do? I've heard people say, well, we shut it down. Really? Can you? Probably not. I mean, you might, you might tell yourself you're stopping people from doing stuff, but if they really want to do it, they're going to do it anyways. And all you've created is um, a distrustful environment where they don't tell you what they're doing because you're just trying to stop them. So that's probably not going to work out. Do you just ignore it? I think a lot of us, that's probably what we do. That doesn't feel good, though, right? I mean, both from the standpoint of 
you don't talk about what you know is going on in the classroom, but you know what's going on out there, and that doesn't feel right. But then there's also the issue of probably one of the one of these applications out there is grabbing a bunch of saw, a bunch of data on these kids and doing some some things with it that you don't really want them to be doing. You know, the the least of which would be marketing to them, right? Or maybe something even worse than that. I've heard people say, educate staff. You know. Teach staff that they've got to read the terms and conditions in the privacy agreements. Really? Is that going to happen? It's not going to happen. All right? They're going to be in the same boat that you're at. They're not going to have the skills. They're not going to have the time. And they probably don't even have the motivation for it. So what do you do then? Well, North Shore's response is educate staff in part. That's part of it. But it's really around the ideas of digital citizenship and responsible use, because I think that is something the teachers need to know more about. And Shelby Reynolds and her, her team, we've done a great job, I think, in getting this project started on raising awareness with staff, raising awareness with kids about what responsible use is, just in general, digital citizenship, how it all flows in, into here. So at least you got their head in the right, right place. And then when, when I ask them to review products, I really have them focus on the product functionality. I don't want them to read the terms and agreements because they're not going to anyways, but really look at the product and say, well, what data are they asking about these kids? What are they gathering? And at least ask yourself, does it make sense that this application that's supposed to help with reading is also asking for the kid's address? Does that even make any sense that they would do that? If they're doing that, then it's probably not a good product. And they want email addresses, really? Because are they communicating back to the kid within the application, or why do they need the address? So at least do that much. And read the documentation, because they'll tell, sometimes within the documentation, they can give you some information. I encourage them to read the terms in the privacy agreement, but there's absolutely no expectation that they're going to. So I don't have any kind of a process set up where it's incumbent on the teacher to have looked at any of that stuff because I like to operate in the real world, and they're not going to anyways. And you're just going to encourage them to lie to you if you, if you say, did you read the terms and conditions? Rest of North Shore's response. Well, so I thought, okay, I don't want to ignore it. I'm not going to have the teachers read the terms themselves. But what we can do is we can control the dollars. Okay, that was our thinking was, okay, if we could at least stop them on the paid services from even buying the thing in the first place until we've had a chance to review it, that might be the start of a solution there. So we work really close with our purchasing department, right? They're, they're good people and cooperative and wanted to work with us on this. And we say, as you see purchase requests come through, don't process any of them until we've signed off on that. And so we've developed a process within our work order system that if somebody wants to, wants to bring in some new software into their classroom, and I'm just talking about those smaller apps that they've, or online services, is they start a work order, right? And they have to answer four questions for us. First one is, does this, is this a product that probably needs to go through our curriculum materials adoption committee, CMAC committee? Is it, you know, is it, are you introducing new curriculum into the classroom through this process? And, you know, it's mostly a question to kind of raise their awareness. And if they say, no, they haven't, and we look at it and think, well, you probably should have, we'll, we'll give them that feedback. I ask, we ask, are you going to use this with kids under the age of 13? Because that's, you know, now we're going to worry about COPE. We've got a different set of rules. We ask them, are you even aware that they're going to be collecting any personal identifiable information within this system? And the other part of that question is, are you going to create accounts for kids? Or are the kids going to be anonymous? in this. And then, because it's just impossible sometimes to find the terms in, in privacy statements, I say you at least got to go out to the website and find the URL for the privacy. Because I mean, I've, sometimes I've spent like 45 minutes trying to find the terms and conditions out there. And, and then you find out they're not even there. You've got to email the vendor. And the vendor sends them to you. And it's just a hassle. So you've know, we you got to do at least that much. You don't give me that information. I'm going to kick the work order back to you and say, try again. And they, they do a good job. And if purchasing gets a, a, a request that comes in that hasn't gone through this process, then they'll send it back to them also. And it was a little bumpy getting that started, but I think it's actually working pretty good now. We get those things flowing through. And then when, we, when we're done, we post the results of my review of the terms and conditions on our website at the URL right there. 
just a really simple little database. There's some things we could do to make it probably more usable for folks, but it's got a list of here's all the applications that I've reviewed and what's the status. Is it pending? Is it approved? Are there conditions? Like maybe we've said, well, you can use it, but you can't use it with any kid under 13, right? Or we'll say, well, I got a, I've got a relationship set up with Bothell High School. They understand there's certain conditions, and it's only approved to be used at that school, but we've got some additional information. But that's all after I've done the review. The review is where the fun start, part begins, right? So I'll get the work order that comes in. I'll see it. I'll get a little depressed because I know I've got to read through another privacy statement and another terms. Maybe I've got to talk to the vendor, probably have to ask them to make some changes in their agreement. We'll go back and forth on that. The rest of my work will be piling up. And this is kind of where my revelation happened and why I didn't finish my presentation. is because as I started thought, thinking about how am I going to describe the process of you know, how's FERPA fit into this and what do I look for in these agreements to make sure that you're compliant with FERPA, how do the different exceptions apply? And I'm talking about a lot of vendors claim an audit exception, but almost none of them really have an audit or a research exception is the real reason why they can use this. So you've got to spend two days educating them on here's what FERPA really says and the exception you're claiming really doesn't apply, but this one does, so I need you to rewrite your agreement. And there's weeks, and i got the teacher at the same time in the back of my ear. I thought, well, that's, I don't want to talk about that. COPA, so I thought, well, I'll talk about COPA. I'll talk about PPRA. I only really need to talk about HIPAA to tell you it probably doesn't apply. Oh, your nurses will tell you it does. It doesn't. Washington Super Act. I thought, okay, I could include talk about that. Started making some notes here. Student privacy pledge. Efforts that other people are doing. And I started thinking about it, and I thought, you know what? I don't feel good telling anybody else to replicate our process because our process sucks. I just... <laughs> it's... It's too much work, it takes too long, it's frustrating for teachers. We've got 21,000 kids, we don't have a lawyer. You probably don't have a lawyer. I'm not qualified to be doing this stuff. I don't want to tell somebody else, adopt our process, because I don't like our process. So the rest of my session really is, so what do we do? We're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. We can't do nothing, right. so we're doing something, and it's a mesh of all of those things, mm -hmm. right? I, I feel like the best we can do is to create this bucket of here's what everybody is doing, do the best that you can. Mm -hmm. That sounds irresponsible, but it's really not. It's like, I feel like we're doing best effort, we're doing what we can to protect your data, because it's really what we can you know, mm -hmm. and, and then just not lose, try not to lose sleep at night. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's where we're at. We've got our own set of agreements, and if they don't have an agreement here, we have one. You need to sign ours. Those kind of things, we're working through the trusted learning environment, seeing if we even want to approach doing some of that business. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But how do you how do you how do you find them? Well, you know, I mean, within the app, you know, like we adhere to, we try to find if it hits those, you know, that kind of stuff. It's the best effort approach, maybe on that is um, stick to those as best we can um, on whatever you know. You know each thing has its own kind of. Uh, so, do you do you allow teachers or students to download new apps to to the iPads or? Um, find that the 
teachers pretty much do what they want with their machines. Uh, get them kind of the way you know, they have admin you know, over that. Um, a lot of best efforts, you know, cover, cover, cover your own, you know, legal part of it as best you can. And so, so my my struggle my my struggle is is that um, is that in that kind of environment I'm just thinking you're probably not covering covering your own load because you don't I'm 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 thinking you don't have you probably don't have time to do it um, I don't know what your background is you probably don't have the skill sets to do it right because we're not we're not trained and any effort that we put in place the thing that I really struggle with what we're doing right now because we're trying to stay on top of this, is we're slowing people down out in the field, getting in the way of teachers doing um, good things, in, hopefully good things in the, in the classroom. I know that I, we had a meeting uh, recently where I, I, I don't think, I know, I irritated one of our librarians because she wanted to know, well, what is this teacher in this classroom going to be doing with Instagram? And my response was, I don't care, because I really don't. Right? I mean, why is the tech director, why would I want to insert myself into the conversation there and say, um, you have to convince me that what you're doing is educationally sound and valid right now in the moment before you get to do these things. And that's not exactly what we're saying here, but the process we've got right now, I am slowing people down. And you're taking away creativity and spontaneity in a classroom. And I just, I think about it, I think that's not why I got into education was to slow people down. Yeah, but, but that we're contemplating right now is badging or micro credentialing different educators. Do we have those that innovators, right? They're always on the cutting edge, but sometimes they innovate so quickly that there's no way we can keep up. So one of the things we've thought about is offering a micro credentialing course of study where they have to prove competency that they understand some of these things mm -hmm. and they understand the policy so that way and then they get open access to innovate. Like in say school. You know, so, you know, because we're a Chrome district, so we can set up educators to have access, different levels of access. So we're just, we're kind of, is that the way to go? Because we still want them to be compliant. Right. But how do we know, at least if we provide the information, we credential them, then we can say, you are part of this elite group of people that can innovate without obstruction. But others, if you don't have the credential, you don't get part of that. But then there's the administrative oversight of that, too. So right. Kind of like... But they've given you some level of assurance that they're saying, I will right. follow through and I will do these we things. We haven't developed it. It's been this idea that's been percolating. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think there's something to that. Tom, you are going to say something. So, uh, you indicated you weren't qualified. Was that just on this issue that you were... It's kind of in general. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't have my administrator's credential. People, people have asked me that in the past. Well, you've got your administrator's whatever. And I said, no, I don't. Well, you're CTL. No, I'm not CTL. You've got this. No, I'm not. No. I do have a driver's license, though. Yeah. So we kind of have a question about the Chrome extension that we're Yeah. Yeah. We should be concerned. I, mean, I don't care about the compliance because we're never going to be in compliance. But there, there are things that we should be concerned about when I'm educating students. I and mean, that's really why college is place, right? right? It's about it's when, when you're being safe. Well, when you're being advertised. Right. What, what's being a good consumer? With. So that's the, the citizenship piece along with the information literacy piece and, and digital literacy piece is really where we're focusing. And as much as we can inform parents about those third parties. So even with our math question just recently, soup to nuts, when you create a question at the beginning, who sees all the data when the kid answers the question? Who are you sharing that with? Like, we want to know that kind of stuff. And what is your personalized, like, who's, who's creating the environment where those kids are? So as I started going through this process, and this process that we've described here, when did we put that in place? Like August this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah is I started, I started off by going like, 
kind of fine tooth comb towards the agreements, and then as the requests started piling up and piling up, and I think since August I've had like a hundred and something of these come through, I started focusing on just that, that moral imperative piece, right? Like I would just look for keywords, phrases, clauses in there, or for, if I'm looking for COPA, I would say, here seems I've got here, you see you say in here. But even at that, it became overwhelming for me. But I think that's like, that was my only option at all. And even at that, the flow came in much, much too fast. Mm-hmm. Right. It just doesn't even fit into it. And then what are you afraid of? So how, how, how are we addressing that with people so they're, they're comfortable finding, we just have a third party cross. It used to be our Google movement, and now it's just, we just get to share. We're going to be careful. Yeah. Those third terms, you can find that on the website, the privacy policy or pledge or whatever it is is there. But then what are you really concerned with, and how can I dispel some of the fears and get you to ask the right questions? What is called thing what you share with your yeah. about your kid? What is you know, what should you really be concerned with? Because there's a lot of fear on the part of our parents, but it's it's just it's silly. Yeah. Nobody's trying to hunt down your kid. You we know? how do those not working in our Google though? Right. They're somewhere else. Right. Educate your kids, but ask the right questions. Around turn it in, you know, right. that's where we ended up having a long conversation, or I did with one parent about the idea of what are you really afraid of. Yes, the terms do say that, that Turnitin gets a perpetual sub-license to everything that the kid has published. There's reasons why they have to do that to do their business, and you're right, they could take your three-page paper on cell division and publish it and get a million dollars for it, I suppose, if there was really a market for that. But that's a hard conversation to have with parents, I mean, because at some level you're telling them, you need to get realistic here. And you don't really want to say that to the parent, but really it's, it's that, what are you so afraid of kind of question. And is the worst thing in the world that your ki- is that your kid's going to see an ad? i got bad news for you. They're going to see a lot of ads. Yeah. 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 So there, there is that big educating the parents component to this. And I, don't, and I think we've got a long ways to go with that piece. Um, yeah, I've got a, I would agree with that, but I feel like, you know, on top of looking for the red flag stuff, the stuff that is about student safety and all of those things we need to be, you know, losing sleep about, but that, that community engagement piece, that education piece is critical to really just relaxing everybody and saying, okay, here's what we're doing and here's why. And, and we're transparent in that. And, and exactly. exactly. So it's taking that digital citizenship, citizenship piece, which is a word, a phrase that I have a lot of trouble saying. Right. You, you have to do students. You've got to do staff. And then you've got to do the parent piece also. We've talked about this idea of having a, a night where you have the parents come in and educate them also, which I think there would be a lot of value to, to something like that. I'd like to see us explore that. Keith? What our message has been is we kind of push that to the curriculum folks. And we we have this thing, you know, we're a smaller district, so it gives us a little, helps us be a little bit more agile and we can do this. But we have a, a meeting every week where we have IT and educational technology with the curriculum folks and the soup uh, in that meeting every week. We sit down at our table and hash out different things. And our message to folks is, listen, if this, if this new whiz bang uh, application you think is going to revolutionize what you want to do, put it through the curriculum folks and then we sit down and have that discussion there. Um, as far as having lawyers review terms and conditions and all that stuff, and I, we're, I think we're in the same boat as you are on time, time constraints for our folks. We don't have the staff to be able to support. Okay, so let, so let me use that because I did, I did kind of have a plan for where I was hoping we would end up with this with this session. So you're in the same boat. Is it fair to say that our concerns are largely the same? That uh, is, is North Shore looking for something 
dramatically different in privacy statements and terms than Springfield is or Tukwila is? Or are we probably looking at the same things? Or Mm -hmm. that you have to ha engage with your community, but I think the elements that those things are protecting against right. are the same. Within right, you, within FERPA, maybe you've defined directory information a little bit and differently than me, but largely the same. Generally, I think it's more the same than not. Are we probably, do you think, looking at the same software, more or less? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're well, and that, 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 all that actually brings up a good thing, is, is, you know, it's so many times what I see is folks come in and say, hey, I found this new piece of software and I want to, I want to get it going, I want to do it. And it's like, well, what does it do? And they kind of explain it and I'm like, well, I know that you could do that with a, a Google Sheet, right? For no money. For no money. <laughs> no money, no additional terms and conditions, or, you know, a lot of times it seems like they found this thing because it's shiny and new, but they don't understand that we have all this other software that we paid for or participate in already that does those same things. And so I, and, we, I, and I wonder, maybe maybe that's where the the disconnect. Is. So I so so let, let, let me put you on the spot a little bit. When you ask that kind of question, do you feel? Like more like you're empowering that teacher to, to use these tools that we've already got and I can support you, or do you feel like a wet blanket? No, I actually feel like I'm empowering them. Because, okay, because I, I'm, because I struggle I, with that. I, 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 would str I struggle with it too, and I think we, I think we all do. But I, to me, you know, if they've heard of the, more than likely they've heard of this software title that I'm kind of pushing back at them and saying, you know, this is this is really cool. You know, this can do all that, and plus it can you know do a few other things. And I'm not trying to stifle your innovation. It's just I don't want you to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. And, See, and, that's and, and there's a lot of resources in the district that already know how to use this X Y Z software. That, mm -hmm. Whereas if you go get this new one, hey, you're on your own. Yeah. Because nobody else here is using it, and now we have all these other things to take into consideration. So I and I say and I say what blanket they're not because because I'm saying don't do that, because I'm saying legitimately when I have that conversation, I mean, I do want people to let them know we've got something here that might be exactly what you want and could save you a lot of time. But I feel like whenever I tell them that, like I deflate them a little bit and I think, I, you know, I didn't start this conversation to make you feel bad, but... Yeah, so that one, I don't have, I mean, maybe that's just because personally I'm a crap communicator, and, and if I could was a kinder person, I wouldn't end up making people feel bad so often. I don't know. None of my team disagrees with that, by the way. Okay. So in Edmonds, we realized that we were trying to uh, solve, of course, the same universal problem. Here. So we took a couple of years ago a three-pronged approach for money, like you were. So we have someone who, who looks from the technical budget standpoint, we have someone who looks from the data standpoint, and we have someone who looks from instructional technology standpoint. And the three of us said, hey, we better, let's see if we can look at these things together and maybe develop some criteria that the, the requester can put forth to the vendor, and the vendor gives us, and then we can either vet this or not. We have some some sort of standard that's just to start with. Um, and you we put this little itty bitty process into place and it's starting to take shape. It, it took three years, but finally the word I think started getting out and people are realizing, oh, there's a process. It's not a perfect process. We need to look at it in streamlining it now because we're not asking all the questions of the vendor we should. We're not, I don't think that we're stifling people's creativity too much. We're, we're slowing it down a little, but at least they know that there's a process. And I think that's the conversation that, that has to get out to the wider community of our people that see the shinies and get really excited. And we want them to say, hey, let's rope in my peeps so that I know that when I put this out, they'll support it. But how, how fast can you individually within Edmonds, can you turn that around for folks? I mean, best case scenario, how fast do you turn it around? Because, I, I mean, I can't get them done within two weeks, usually. And by two weeks, the moment's gone. Depends on which two weeks. 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we have done it in a, in a week. It also depends on who's requesting. When your assistant soup is requesting it, can have multiple options. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is, um, first I was thinking ESDs, right? Because they serve a larger area. And then I thought, I hope there's not, nobody, well, I know there's nobody from the Washington ESDs here because that's kind of the problem, right? Because they don't come to any of these kinds of deals. But I'm thinking, well, which of the ESDs in Washington would spearhead this? And it made me sad when I thought about that because that's not going to happen. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I think But my, my question is, do we know anybody who heads an organization that spans Washington and Oregon and also happens to be a lawyer? Hmm. Thomas Richards. I'm thinking of OETC. Yeah, I'm thinking, why, why couldn't this be a service that we could present to OETC and say, could you guys help us with this, right? I mean, it's already a purchasing consortium. We've got the mechanism that's set up there already. Is that something that we could get these guys interested in? They could help spearhead this for Is that something that would make any sense? We talked about this at the Rachel Lindsay and I did a session at the Future Ready Summit in mm -hmm. the Right. I don't know why you'd do it again if I already did it with <laughs> Right. So it, it makes sense. It's just need a start with positive right basis. So, well, so it, it, is it fair to say that there are people there are people in this room who would be interested in approaching at ESD or Thomas or any of these groups and say, we need a better solution that we've got right now and we think there might actually be some business in this for you as well. Okay. Because I, I think that's the only solution. I can't think of anything else that's going to work. Okay. Jennifer Wright is on Mercer Island. Yeah, so she could talk with Steve and see what's going on there. Okay. Yeah. I think the idea is great. I think OECC would be a good spot for it because I think the other thing is that your district, so you contact a vendor and say, we want you to change your contract terms. Not that likely, but if you have a consortium that says, all the Oregon and Washington districts are looking forward to this and we'd like to get a change. I mean, I think there's truly some powers in numbers. Not yeah. Only to cut down time. I think that's got to be true. If, if I'm telling them that if you get yourself in alignment with what we're doing, we're going to put you on the accepted list on the database that we've reviewed, then we can start driving people towards that as a source to say, you know, you've got this new whiz-bang product that you like. First thing you do is go check this database and see as a consortium, have we signed off on this thing? If so, you know, the only question then becomes you may want to check with the curriculum department and make sure this is in alignment with what they're doing. But from technology, from purchasing, we're fine with this thing now. Yeah. What if, what, if, what if we decided are they important parts to meet the needs for I mean, I, we'll follow behind you guys for sure. We're yeah, have I, would, sure. I would suspect that the, the, the terms and conditions look for us that we've created is like everybody else. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. Questions are the same. Yeah. We just have to figure out. And if we put them together, we can just have a generic. Here it is. Yeah. It's all the good stuff. Look for these things. Well, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, Tom and I, are, we're both on the, on the board, you can tell, because we've got the awesome badges. Not the suck white badges like you guys have got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I've got, a communica I've got a communication likability problem. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Um, but we, we've talked on the board about ideas of what can a ACPE do for the membership other than put on the best conference in the world for three days every... Oh, please. Please, please. Um, something or other. It's got to spell an awesome word, though. It's got to be better than super, which is the worst acronym ever for legislation. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, that's the student privacy pledge, right? I don't know if you guys know about that, but student privacy pledge, vendors want to be on that list because they know that's where people come to see, is this a decent product? Can I feel relatively safe putting this out there? Yeah. I see, I think, there's a, I, think, I think that's the only possible solution that we've got. And I would also suggest that to really make it effective, um, even though what I'm proposing is that we 
buy into this in some manner because there's a there's a cost with it is that we just make it open though right i mean you buy into it out of the kind of the goodness of your heart because it's the right thing to do but that we not put it behind any kind of firewall we're going to block anybody from getting access to it well, you know? the beauty of the idea is that thomas can actually work with those vendors to put in agreements for purchasing as well so yeah well th th i didn't even thought of that wow Friday, Lindley's first good idea. Nice job. All week, really. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. That, actually, that, that, is a, that is a great idea. Other thoughts? So people are in favor of us pursuing this idea then. Okay. Aye. Okay. Aye. Second. I didn't actually make a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but as contributors also, right, because I think, you know, we're, we're going to have to help, to, whoever we work with, we're going to have to define what is it that we're concerned about, uh, you know, where do we draw the line on, on different, on, on agreements, you know, give them some kind of guidance, and then talk about some kind of payment structure and figure these things out. But I got to believe that there's going to be a lot of people who would want access to something like that. Okay. I don't know, how much time do I have left? I got 18 minutes. What else do you guys want to talk about? I went to that. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, they've got some nice little drop boxes and you can search either by school or by application. Yeah. And it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good list. I know that they've also, if you look in there, they also, um, and this is the part that I have to, we'd have to work out with some lawyers. I know that sometimes they'll publish the reason why they declined this particular product. And when I saw that, I thought, that is awesome and helpful. Is that a massive liability problem that, right. you know, that you've got? I don't know. I'd have to have somebody well, tell me. Maybe that's it. You know, it's, it's about phrasing, you know, and, oh, yeah. and maybe you can just say, you know, here's what we're seeing that concerns the, the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, and that's and part of the... districts make their choice. Right. And let districts make their choice. So it would be, yes, some of the phrasing. But that was part of my concern. My original thought was North Shore could just publicize what we're doing, push it out to people, and you guys could do it. But then I thought, well, I don't know, am I... Assuming liability, and I have no credentials. I'm totally unqualified, as Tom's pointed out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What better way to show due diligence and best practice than by being part of the alliance? You know what I also like about this approach then is it frees it could free up a lot of time for us who are who are trying to do this now, so you can focus more on. Maybe other things, or maybe on that education piece of it that you were talking about with parents, with staff, with students, that you're probably not doing the best job you really wanted to do there, and, uh, you know, get, get you some more space. And who knows, I mean, maybe it grows into, um, you know, you actually get, uh, have a free night. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. What do we got? Anything else, or do I just get busy with uh, working with uh, OETC on this thing? We can, we can, yeah, we can collect information now, or I can just, what I can do instead is I can just post it out to the listserv later and say, here's, here's, what, here's the idea that we came up with in this session, let me know if you're interested, and we'll build it that way instead. That avoids me having to read a piece of paper where people have written things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Done. See? Last session of the day, pretty good, huh? And you get to go home early. How about that? 15 minutes. These are some sweets. You know, I spent a bunch of time looking at different themes, and then I realized I don't know. Uh, I have no sense. Well, I'm telling you, what that was, so this is, these were my notes as I'm going through, and I'm just slapping in massive amounts of stuff in slides. And I was going to edit it down. And that's when I started thinking, I hate our process, and I'm not going to edit any of this. I'm just going to leave it like it is. So that's just a cut and paste job. Okay. Oh, and by the way, student privacy pledge, just because people have pledged to do those things, doesn't necessarily mean you do. Yeah. Who's checking? Yeah. Well, they, you know, they say that they, um, I've worked with some of the future privacy forum folks, and they try to do a good job. But I've had to go back to some of the vendors on that list also and say, I know you said you agreed to all these things, but here's actually three of them that your agreements 
don't say that you're doing correctly. Now, to their credit, I haven't had any of the vendors say, screw you, I'm not going to change it. They've all wanted to go back and change, change it. That's what it is. Yeah. You guys have actually, you're a signatory on it. Yeah, you're on the list. You said you're going to do all these things. Mm -mm. Called graphite.org. So there's, they have a privacy working group going also. So that's something we can build into this. Great. Because they're starting teacher rating versus graphite. That's their org, their graphite rating, which mm -hmm. is the privacy piece. Then there's teacher rating, which is the instructional piece. When I, when I send out the, the message to the list to get this going, um, if you know about these types of different sites, Push those out there also, and we'll build it up. You know, and that you were talking about the efforts that are going on, or should be going on at OSPI yeah. around Super. Let's let's get that going also. Yeah, I heard that. I just haven't seen, seen okay. Them All right. So I want to control access to this thing. Yeah. Maybe you've got to be an OETC member. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna advocate for just being open, though. I mean, we'll, I mean, I know that North Shore, we'd pay into it. You know, we'd help contribute um, under the idea of it's good for everybody to have access to it. But, you know, maybe Thomas wants to keep it. You've got to be a member of OETC. But I mean, I, what, what I don't want to do is to say um, to a district, let's say Republic in Washington, real small district, not a lot of money. And if we set a price point someplace that's out of, out of their reach, you know, I don't want to limit them that way. I'd say, well, in so many other ways, we already uh, support them, right? So why not do it here also? Okay. That's it. I got nothing else. Okay. Thank you.